Welcome back to our course, Fundamentals of Operating Systems, based on the text by Abraham Silbershots, Greg Gagne, and Peter Galvin, entitled Operating System Concepts, 10th Edition, published by Wiley Publishing. In the last lesson, we were discussing variable and fixed size blocks, memory blocks, for loading processes into. And one of the problems that we ran into was the problem of fragmentation. Either external fragmentation, which would have been fragmentation between blocks, or in the case of the fixed block configuration scheme, fragmentation within a block. In either case, fragmentation is a problem. Well, in this lesson, we're going to start talking about one of the potential solutions to this problem. So let's begin. We have been talking about dynamic memory allocation. Another step in the evolution of memory management is referred to as relocatable dynamic memory allocation. Let's figure out how to combine all that available fragmented memory into one block. One solution to the problem of external fragmentation is compaction. The goal is to shuffle the memory contents to place all the free blocks together into one large block. Compaction is not always possible though. If relocation is static and is done at assembly or load time, compaction can't be done. It is only possible if relocation is dynamic and is done at execution time. If addresses are relocated dynamically, relocation requires only moving the program and data and then changing the base register to reflect the new base address. When compaction is possible, we need to determine the cost. The simplest compaction algorithm is to move all processes toward one end of the memory and all of the available blocks move toward the other end, producing one large available block. The relocatable dynamic memory allocation strategy can be expensive though. When is it done? Any time that there are two fragmented blocks? Certainly we realize that such an approach would take time because everything needs to stop while compaction is taking place. What if we only do it when there's a large job waiting? Now that might help, but how much? Another possible solution to the external fragmentation problem is to permit the logical address space of processes to be non-contiguous. Ah. This would allow a process to be allocated physical memory wherever such memory is available. Wow, that sounds great, doesn't it? This is the strategy used in paging, the most common memory management technique found in computer systems. Fragmentation is a general problem in computing that can occur wherever we must manage blocks of data. So let's leave this discussion of contiguous memory locations and start exploring another idea. Uh, I don't really want to start paging in this lesson. I'd like for that to be separate. So we will stop on the discussion of relocatable dynamic memory allocation and compaction and move on to paging in the next lesson. But before we go, why don't we take a moment to kind of review where we've come from. In the earlier part of the course, in the unit on processes, we, was, we talked about the fact that a computer program is a static entity that is stored on the disk or stored somewhere in secondary storage. But in order to be run, it has to be loaded into memory, at which time it's referred to normally as a process or a job. And when we are loading this program into memory, it has to be more or less decomposed into smaller pieces. We're talking about taking a single entity, a file, off the disk, and we're going to load it into smaller memory locations, addressable memory locations in the computer. 
in RAM. And in order for this to work, we will need to decompose that file into smaller pieces in order to fit those pieces into these various memory locations. Now, when this is being loaded, we talked about in the uh, one of the more recent lessons that it might be possible to assign physical memory addresses at at compile time or load time, but that's not normally done. That is normally done at execution. So as this program is being loaded into memory and turned into a process, the CPU still has to break it apart or decompose it into smaller pieces so that it can be addressed. And it, it creates an addressing scheme, and we refer to that addressing scheme as a logical addressing scheme. It may start out at address zero, or it may not start out at address zero. In other words, if there are already other programs loaded into memory, address zero would probably be used. So it might be picking up on the next addressable piece after the uh, end of the previous program or previous process. And so it, the CPU assigns these small chunks of that program from the disk into uh, smaller pieces and gives them a logical address. But as these, pi these pieces with their logical address are placed in memory, they are placed in real physical memory address spaces. And each of those address spaces has a physical address. So as the program executes, a translation must take place to translate that logical address that was assigned by the CPU as the program was being loaded into a physical address so that it can actually go to the proper uh, memory location and load the, that piece in. Now that was not, that was kind of ad lib description right there so forgive me if it's not as smooth as it would like to be I didn't really sit down and write a script to tell you this but I thought this would be an appropriate time to bring it up so let's take a break now uh, go back and review your notes uh, update your study guide on the section on relocatable dynamic memory allocation and compaction and when you come back we'll start talking about paging